So we can also say the child class is all the features is all the features of the parent class. Okay, so that means if we are going to define, let's say, um, a vehicle now, let's say we are programming something, right? And then we've got our little class here. And then we say our little class, we, we go on to say, um, maybe this is our class public class uh, vehicle, right? Then we get in here, then we define our class here, public class vehicle, okay? Then inside there, we then define our, maybe our constructor, our public constructor, which will be what? Vehicle as well, maybe the font has become too small. Let me just increase that, yes. So here it's now public vehicle our constructor right and then maybe we define some key variables here okay so our variables now we said it has got a type of steering wheel so we could say string uh, steering wheel then we have got int wheels and then maybe also string fuel and then we have um what are the future did we define uh engine and yeah maybe type of engine and then we say maybe string engine right and then we said inside our um, inside our constructor we define the we instantiate those features so we could say every time a vehicle is created it's going to have maybe four wheels and then each type of steering wheel could be uh, steering wheel is equal to round okay it could be have a round steering or a circular uh, steering wheel then it has got fuel maybe every time by default the fuel if you don't change it it will be a diesel diesel fuel maybe just for argument's sake and then its engine type could be a block type when i engine okay so i could say engine is equal to or we could call it a v engine right it's a v-shaped engine so these are the key features of any class of any this is the the vehicle class and the vehicle class contains the key features of any vehicle all right now we want to create a sedan and we're saying you know what a sedan is a type of car a sedan and a truck are not similar but all of them have got the same key features now if I'm going to create a sedan, maybe here now I'm going to create my sedan class and then go on to say uh, public class sedan, okay? So remember this is pseudocode, it's not correct every time, so don't mark the syntax, but look at the concept. So we could say um, so this is my, my public my sedan class and I want to create a sedan but one thing I know is that a sedan has got a steering wheel it has wheels, it has fuel and it has got engine right? so instead of recreating or instead of actually writing all these things again because I could just take these things again and post them in here okay? and now I have a vehicle and then I just change my constructor to what? to sedan but instead of doing that that's actually repetition so there's no need for me to to repeat what has already been written somewhere else so instead of doing that what i just do is here i inherit the features of the vehicle class so i just say if it's java you say extend so public class sedan extends vehicle okay so what we have done here is basically what we, we are saying the features of the vehicle class are now automatically imported into the CDN class so writing it like this and then maybe let's say uh, like we said we've got int table booster like we said uh, these are the unique features to a so here now instead of defining everything that has got that a vehicle a, a CDN has we are no longer going to write those things that are already in the vehicle class but we are just going to now what focus on the things that are unique to um 
twice done. So it has got int booster, then it has got a maybe we call it um, our boot, okay? Yeah, and maybe it has got a radio, okay? Maybe string radio. So these are things that are unique to our to our um, uh, to our CDN class. So writing the the class like this is similar to writing it like this. This is similar to public class sedan. Okay. And then here we So it's similar to writing it like this to taking all this and pasting it here. And then checking everything in here. And putting it here. Okay. So I hope you can still see on the screen. Now, so if you look at these two things, these two classes, let me just increase the font. Mm. So I want you to look at these two classes here. Just a moment. So the first class is this one, very short and straightforward, right? And then the second class is this one. It's exact, these are exactly the same two classes, okay? These classes are very similar, the two of them. There's this one, let me change its color. Okay, let me put it in, in that color. And then there's this one. Now you can find that this one contains everything that this one contains. The difference is how you've written it. So instead of read, so now if I want to create a track, would I prefer to write my class, my track class like this one or like this one? So the first class is a simpler way of inheriting or using core features that have been defined in a different class or in a different object. So instead of redefining the features in a vehicle, we all know a vehicle has got a steering wheel, wheels, fuel, and engine. All we just have to do is to say, you know what? Since we are going to create many different types of vehicles, let's create one object that contains all the core features so that we don't have to repeat ourselves having to code them again. And then when we now want to create the unique features of each of our codes, of our objects, like the sedan, then we just import or inherit all the features of the vehicle which are code to any system. So here, this class is exactly with just one, two, three lines is exactly similar to this class with all these lines. But we used inheritance to make it this short. So that's basically what inheritance is about. It's about having a parent class or a super class. So it can be called a parent or a super class, which is a child class or a subclass is going to inherit features for. So just remember that whatever is in the vehicle class is now in the sedan class. So the sedan class is like a combination of these unique features of itself as well as these features of a vehicle class. So it's exactly the same thing but different, uh, written in a shorter and better way. So that's basically what inheritance is about. And it's a very key feature when it comes to um, object-oriented programming because one of its key advantages is reusability of your code inheritance so some of the, its um, advantages include code reuse so you as we said you know you can use the vehicle class multi multiple times on different types types of objects so it so for example if you're going to create a sedan you're going to also what extend the vehicle class right because it has all those features we are going to get create a track all you just have to do to have the core features is to extend the vehicle class as well so what you now have is you have two vehicles that have got the same core features wheels fuel engine seat but then they also have their own uh, attributes which are defined in their own in their own classes then we, they, it also promotes code reuse 
okay like i said there's there's um code reuse yeah so with code reuse it allows you to just write something once just code once so instead of recording all this every time you want to create an object instead of recording a steering wheel a wheels uh, uh, the fuel the engine type we just do it once in this class in this vehicle class and then we just import those things into our cgen class so if you want to create um a track class all we have to do is to also create public class track and then we extend the vehicle then maybe we can now say we want to change the number of wheels that this vehicle has and we say wheels is equal to six so now in the standard vehicle class we had four wheels so when this when we create an object using the vehicle class you get four wheels but when you now override define the the wheels in the class it's in the subclass itself then you can override those wheels and say you know what i don't want four wheels for this object i want six so this is gen class because we did not override it's got four wheels and then the public uh, the track class because we've overridden the wheels variable now has six wheels and then maybe here we can say it has got um i don't know we can define new features like string four wheel drive is equal to yes or no yes it's available let's just say so and we say a track it has got a trailer uh, int trailer which shows whether it's, a, it's available or not is equal to zero which means there's no trailer okay so these are unique features to our track and these are unique features to our sedan but both of them has got <coughs> you've got the vehicle features so that's inheritance for you okay so now we said we now we want to look at method overloading and method overriding now it's very important to understand the difference between those two so let's start with method um okay let me define the the simple differences between these two method overloading and method overriding so method the first thing to remember is that method overloading it happens let me put it this way this one happens to okay let's define it first okay method overloading method overloading is where a class is two is two or more methods with the same name but different number of arguments okay so for example we, we could define um a class public class vehicle right let's define our vehicle class let's just say it's the vehicle class and inside that vehicle class we have created two objects we have created two objects i mean we have got a method maybe we can say um public vehicle and then we say public uh, void um, drive uh, uh, drive yeah let's just say drive this is the first method then when we are now doing public uh, um when we are now doing method overloading just a moment let me format this okay so this is our little method right then when we are doing method overloading we are going to create another method that is got the name drive okay so as you can see these two are similar the difference now is this one one of them has got more method um, a different set of arguments to the other so for example this one has got no arguments but this one could have an argument to say string driver name oh, sorry driver name and then a string type of vehicle type of car so as you can see this one is taking two arguments so whenever you are, you are calling this uh, method you have to define what these two variables stand for but this one does not contain any object so as you can see method overloading we have got two or more methods in this case of two methods that has got exactly the same name drive drive and the return type but they've got different number of of arguments so the different number of arguments this one could have two arguments this one could have three this one could have zero this one could have four the key thing is to just know that the number of arguments are different but the name and everything else are similar 
So the key thing for you to remember now is method of alloging occurs to methods in the same class. That's very important. Same class. Okay? I want you to remember this part. Same class. So they, they are in the same class. So we are basically overloading one name with two or more methods. Now let's look at the next one, method overriding. So method overriding occurs, it occurs um, when a method in the parent class or in the parent or super class in the parent or superclass is um, is overridden maybe if I say overridden okay let me let me rephrase it in a simpler way so that it, it's clear exactly what you're saying so method overriding occurs when a method in a child class is the exact same name as a method in the parent or super class the reason why i chose this definition i think it's easier to to think of it um in a simpler way so when this happens when a child class remember this applies to applies where there is inheritance so clearly where there is a parent and a child class we're not talking of inheritance so method overriding is is when this child class has got a it's all the same class so let's say we have got um a, a child class called um public class we call it sedan again right and then we also have our parent class let's not forget our parent class which is what vehicle So within the vehicle class now, we have defined a method which is called um, what can what what method can you call it? Maybe let's call it um, auto transmission. I don't know. So we can call it public uh, void auto. Okay, is it does it have automatic transmission or, or not? So this is the method. Then we also come to our public sedan class, and in that class we also define a what an auto uh, method public void auto now the dif i think you can see the difference with method overloading with method overriding is the same method in different classes okay it's in different classes one is in the child class and the other is in the parent class with method overriding both with both, uh, i mean with method overloading both methods are in the same class with method overriding one is in the super class and one is in this is child class but they all have the same name now which one will take precedence in this instance remember we said when this one extends when it inherits um when it inherits from the parent class it's going to inherit everything that means it's we are we are ending up with a with a program that has got two similar methods so if it has got two similar methods like this after extending the vehicle class then which one takes precedence the child class method takes precedence that's why it's called overriding so it's like we are taking from the parent class but what the parent class is not really what we want so we redefine what the parent class by two, by changing it so we are maintaining the same um, method name maybe with different or with similar arguments but we are now changing the implementation the code within so the the child class method takes precedence so this is the one that's what that is now going to be called first so this is the method that's going to be called code so the method in this child class is going to be code and used and this one is going to be disregarded so it's like the compiler will look at this and say ah there's a child in the parent class and they both have the same method so that means i'm going to ignore the method in the parent class and i will use the method in the in the child class now another thing that you just need to remember on 
on precedence is that whenever you override whether you're overriding a vehicle um, i mean a variable or a method in the child class the child class implementation always takes precedence it's it is is the one that is now going to be recognized by the system so always remember that about um precedence method overriding or any other thing that you may override so we have basically defined method overloading where we have got two or more methods of the same name but different arguments in one class and then method overriding where we've got two or more methods of the same name in different classes where one is a per one at least one of them is a parent class and the other one is a is a child class so that's method overriding then we end up having polymorphism so polymorphism also is a feature of um it's a feature of inheritance in the sense that as i was saying before as i was saying before um Remember, we said a vehicle is the parent class or parent object, right? Then a sedan is a type of a sedan is a type of vehicle. So, what does this mean? That means a sedan is equal to a vehicle, right? Yes, so a, a sedan is a vehicle. It's a type of vehicle. It's a subset of a vehicle. That's another way of putting it. Sub sedan is a subset. Is a subset of the vehicle class. So a, a sedan and a vehicle are similar. It could almost be the same thing to say a sedan is a vehicle. A sedan is a type of vehicle. So that means when we are now declaring our objects, we could say. Um, when you're creating what we could say sedan maybe call it bmw is called to new sedan so we've got an object called bmw okay we have an object called bmw that we have just uh, instantiated of the sedan class but because a sedan is a type of vehicle we can actually say a vehicle maybe call it vehicle car is equal to bmw so basically this object so this vehicle car is similar to bmw but how is this possible this is possible because of this relationship where we say a sedan is a type of vehicle and a vehicle has got um is the parent class of a sedan therefore we can actually call a bmw a vehicle right so we can declare an object called vehicle car that is similar to our sedan BMW. So polyform polymorphism is so polymorphism generally speaking is where an object can take different of uh, different um what can you call it shapes. So this is so we can say this is when an object can take different forms so vehicle so object car and object bmw are the same object so object car and object bmw are the exact same object so in that instance we have achieved polymorphism it's one object with two different identities so that's polymorphism okay so I just want you to remember that polymorphism refers to an object that can take different forms. This is an example of it. And um, you can actually say, here yeah, you can actually say vehicle, um, uh, let's just say Alex is equal to new sedan. This is still legal. Because it's exactly, a, a sedan is a vehicle. So you can actually create a, a an object of the parent class referencing the child class that is also legal so that is basically so what you have created here is a new sedan called alex but you have just used the the vehicle um ob uh, class object or reference so this is polymorphism the so encapsulation is where we do not want our program to have direct access to our 
class members. So our class members could be our variables, our methods, our constructor, and the like. So we are basically blocking uh, direct access to our class members. Okay, so there will be no uh, direct reference to any of our members. So let's say we've got certain variables or methods in the in our class. For example, maybe a, we there's a, a a method that defines the process of installing a radio, right, in a car. So instead of um, our other classes going directly to call that method, we create a method called install radio. And what this method does is basically just blocks any reference to to the back end workings of our methods. And when a person wants to install a radio and they just call the class install radio, they don't know how it's implemented. They don't know how the, the workings go. So all they know is that if they call the install radio class, it will just work. They don't even know the variables or what. So these are what we call getter and setter methods. All they do is get or set certain variables, certain methods or certain uh, values. So getter and setter methods create, um, uh, are used as part of the encapsulation process of programming where we do not want the inner workings of our class to be known by other modules or by other classes out there. And this is where you find that most of your uh, class members are private. And remember, as a class modifier, as an access modifier, a private member cannot be accessed by any other object or any other um, class outside of its original class. So with encapsulation, you are going to declare private class members, and then you're just going to use the getter and setter methods as the public interfaces to those private class uh, members so that you avoid uh, people or other objects or modules having direct access to, to those uh, objects. Then abstraction is exactly what is can be explained in the form of classes or inheritance. So ab abstraction, basically we are generalizing. Okay, we are generalizing the features of um, of our object. For example, when we create our vehicle class, the vehicle class creates a what? A general object. Okay, so we have just uh, created an abstraction of a vehicle. Say, so you know what? If I'm going to just create a vehicle, uh, an abstract picture or a general picture of a vehicle is it has got a, a, a steering wheel, it's got wheels, it has got a it has got an engine it takes fuel right so what you're doing is you're just creating something that is general which can be reused so it can be reused or inherited by other classes so this object that you have created is general such that other objects instead of recording or rewriting all those things we will just use what is already been created and what is already there. So abstraction allows for code reuse, it allows for inheritance, and it allows for all those other features that we spoke of in terms of um, inheritance. So this is basically um, what inheritance is about, what method overriding and overloading are about, what polymorphism, polymorphism, abstraction, and encapsulation are about. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you can always ask me anytime.